John Dalton, Prince of Historians. My name is Mike Power. I'm a local historian here in Swords, uncovering previous heritage and sites of interest uh, to the public. In this podcast, we'll be looking at John Dalton, a very famous and eminent barrister and historian, to see what lessons we can learn from his work on North County Dublin and on the Swords area. The child is father to the man. This phrase of Shakespeare's points up the fact that beginnings often lead to formative effects. This applies to buildings, people and nations. Historians seek to find the underlying causes for these events and to link the world that we see today with those previous uh, events. For example, our 1916 proclamation and our 1938 Irish constitution are all founded on the revolutionary history and movement within Ireland. Historians seek to sh- shuffle the disjointed rubble, rubble of history to find reasonable explanations. Historiography is the science of the reasons and causes that happen in history. To examine these, a historian has to seek resources and documents which will give him the information about that particular topic. I myself have gone to many resources and archives in the effort to find the background to the history and development of swords and its swords at people. I've encapsulated all this information in a forthcoming book called Swords, History and Heritage, a Community Approach. John Dalton Barrister and historian, was born in 1792 and he died in 1867. Dalton was working at a time when many historians were active in Ireland in the 19th century, seeking to uncover the mysteries and the secrets of Celtic life, the people that went uh, before. Dalton was a stellar performer and academic. He went to Trinity at 14 years of age and by 18, he'd already completed his studies in Trinity College. Dalton was called to the bar in 1811. Dalton was working at a time when other historians like Eugene O'Cleary, like George Petrie or Sam Ferguson were outlining the rich and varied Celtic and distinctively Irish history that is our legacy here in Ireland. Dalton had a brilliant mind and he lived at 48 Somerville Hill, Uh, in Dublin. In appearance, Dalton was medium-sized, sporting mutton-chop whiskers, and with the high starch collars of that particular day. His most appealing feature were his blue eyes, which pierced you immediately with its understanding and wisdom. Dalton came to history with two particular skills. Dalton was an expert on genealogy and on the pedigrees and family trees of some of the most important people in Ireland. One of his book details the family histories and trees of all the officers of James II who would have fought at the Battle of the Boyne. Dalton also wrote histories of County Dublin, of Drogheda and also a book about Henry II, Over 30 years, this very prolific and insightful historian produced a total over of work which remains for us today. In 1818, Dalton married a Miss Phillips, had a number of daughters and lived in Summerhill as we've seen. Having looked at some of the archives in the Loud libraries, I came across two letters of Dalton's, one to his wife and one to his daughter. In the letter to his wife, he counsels her on how to spend the £15 that he sent to her. He suggests she may buy some books for him or otherwise something for the house. Dalton went to the west of Ireland where he practised his law and from Dublin he actually used the canal to travel rather than taking post chase or other uh, means of uh, travelling. In 1833, Dalton contributed to the Irish Penny magazine, which was a magazine described as for the diffusion of useful knowledge to all and sundry. 
His magisterial book, The History of County Dublin, runs to 926 pages. Dalton often said that he spent 30 years of his life, in addition to his legal practice, in developing sources and information and uncovering new facts about the history of County Dublin and of swords. Dalton's History of County Dublin remains the standard textbook and the source of a lot of information about swords and Dublin County. Dalton has a chronological mind. On one page, he details all the representatives from swords from 1530 right down to 1713. On another page, Dalton talks about the prebendaries or the clergy people who took their income from swords right from 1270 down to modern days. What an extensive and accurate historian he was. Dalton also had a good sense of the lie of the land, or what's called the science of topology. Here in swords, we have a mound or a mot situated near Noxidan Bridge. He came to the mound in 1838 and sincerely believed that it was the burial place of some Celtic gods and some former nobility. Even the mighty can make mistakes. In beginning his history of County Dublin, John Dalton begins with an enumeration of the statistics in relation to the size of the county, the rivers that passed through it and the occupations of the people um, who lived there. Swords from medieval times was a very important part of County Dublin, in fact a city at one stage rivalling Dublin itself. Dalton was also a very acclaimed natural scientist and spends many pages detailing the very intensive wild fauna and flora to be found around the district of Swords. Dalton remains the model for most later historians. He came to history with a great mind, with an aptitude for languages, ancient and modern, and gathered around himself many books dating from medieval times. In fact, when Dalton's library was to be sold, Trinity College made an effort to buy the books, but they were outbid by other private buyers. As a result, Dalton's very precious library and his sore of medieval Irish manuscripts now are scattered across the world, some being held in America, some in London, and some, as I've said, in County Louth. Dalton's History of County Dublin is the first intensive and accurate volume of local history ever compiled. What have we learned from Dalton in relation to swords? As I've said, he visited the place in 1838. He first went to the monastic site and he makes the point that the present Church of Ireland Church was built on the foundations of a previous medieval uh, manor and foundation. He bewails the fact that this fine Gothic architecture has fallen to the hand of modernism and the stones incorporated into the new 1811 uh, church on the hill. Dalton reminds us that Swords was a walled town. He reminds us that the walls of the town stretched out two and a half miles from the monastic site and were probably made of uh, uh, clay and earthen uh, banks. Today, we can see the remains of those old walls underneath much later, later walls put there in the 19th uh, century. Dalton's knowledge of pedigrees and of genealogy gives him a special insight into some of the famous families which inhabited the Swords area. Taylors, Nettervilles, Russells, Savages and Kettles. Strange sounding names, but all important families in the social infrastructure of Swords. Inside the church, Dalton makes mention of the many historical emblems and effigies which, which remain in there and which are still to be seen within this to this day.